Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night, 9.44 p.m., Friday the 13th, 2025. So, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.5 in the green flag out in the oil fields of Texas. Also a 3.7 here just off the coast of Peru, it looks like. A little bit of movement stirring off in the eastern, southeastern Pacific out here as well. That should amplify... Uh, the Peru Chile Trench there. Starting off here with space weather activity real quick. Uh, folks wanting to know if, uh, well, the Aurora is going to be showing up here tonight. Um, there is still a G2 class storm watch in effect. Uh, the KP index has drastically dropped off here within the last hour or so. Um, that is due to the BZ component here of the interplanetary magnetic field completely pointing up to the north, closing uh, all the way up here. And that's going to suppress the auroras after, uh, well, a couple days here of it pretty much uh, pointing south the entire time, allowing some uh, auroras to kick up there throughout the day and also last night. But that is closing as we speak. Don't know if we're going to see that open back up, but uh, if that BZ component stays north uh, don't count on seeing the auroras out there tonight but uh, either way we have a chance uh, if things cooperate up to a G2 class storm uh, as far as flaring activity goes I did have a uh, little C flare actually I think it reached into the M flare category here earlier very low grade M flare that is uh, <clears throat> was actually produced from this sunspot back over here the departing sunspot, that large area that's been facing us for a number of days, really not doing much. Now it wants to kick up and produce some flaring activity as it, uh, well, it's just about ready to depart the western limb over here. Go figure. Uh, so that's pretty much out of sight, out of mind here soon. Um, these areas back here across the eastern uh, quadrant of the sun, uh, really not too concerned with them right now. I don't see a whole lot of complexity within that sunspot group. So overall flare threat is uh, dropping for now. We do have this coronal hole, number 57, that's been uh, facing us here for a number of days. Waiting on the arrival of that high-speed solar wind stream. That could amplify the conditions further across the uh, space weather aspect of things as far as aurora activity goes. And of course... That uh, has not arrived yet. I don't see any high-speed solar wind stream here. Uh, that obviously would go up in terms of the speed here, but I don't see it. Uh, but with this, how it's pointing way north up here, uh, it doesn't matter even if it comes in or not. It may not see anything uh, because of that BZ component. All right, uh, earthquake activity. See what's going on out here across the... Uh, west coast today i know we got a lot of activity stirring up inland around the texas area the oil fields here are just getting hammered with earthquake activity today a bunch of three stirring up outside of pecos texas out there in the oil field the desert of texas if we go to the satellite imagery here i can show you guys uh there's quite a few oil fields out here you have to zoom in a little bit closer to see these wastewater ponds and injection facilities out there uh, the, these earthquakes here in the five or three range are occurring uh, in close proximity to some of these uh, oil pads as well. There may be some oil pads that have been, this looks like an old one out here, may have been some older ones out here that have been now, you know, um, non-operative. But uh, either way, it's, it's occurring out there in the oil fields of Texas. A lot of earthquake activity. Watch for that. Uh, a lot of times when we get uptick like this, we'll see maybe even up to a 5 magnitude, maybe a mid-5 or so. So watch that. Uh, eastern portion of the country, one earthquake out around the New Madrid seismic zone earlier this afternoon. A little 1.9, nothing nothing big to note there. Also way up north here in the Canada, it looks like a little 1.6 this morning. Uh, there's an earthquake in Yellowstone National Park that... Uh, a little swarm of activity. Uh, let's go check that out real quick and see if there's anything else stirring up out there. Uh, that swarm of activity stirred up about 2 or 3 in the morning local time there across Yellowstone. Uh, decent amount of earthquake activity there. I'm not going to count them all, but I'm sure it's over 100. Uh, the USGS is probably showing, well, looks like uh, 
five. <laughs> Remember, a lot of these earthquakes here are extremely small, so they're probably not even going to uh, throw those in there. But there was a handful of them. And uh, the earthquakes that were around the one range, and I think we even had one in the two range, the 2.3, uh, that was the biggest of that swarm. That uh, did show up on other seismograph stations across the area, Old Faithful, Little West Thumb, even up around the West Boundary area. These little microquakes really aren't going to show up um, unless it's right around the seismograph station there where the uh, Pitchstone Plateau is. That's where the uh, swarm was striking this morning. But since then, it looks like things have died off. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening there for now. Um, Idaho got two earthquakes here, one from yesterday and one from today. It's gone absolutely quiet here. I mean, it's been ramping up as far as earthquake activity recently, but... Uh, getting a little pause right now but still don't uh don't let your guard down out there uh, washington a couple smaller quakes nothing big going on we did have some activity up off the coast of canada here along the north american and the pacific plate boundary that's going to be a 3.1 uh, fairly fairly new earthquake up here um, some movement down south here into northern california from this morning that 4.1 struck just after midnight last night. Uh, trimmer activity for the Cascadia Trimmer is about 70 epicenters of trimmer here underneath the Vancouver Island ranges there. So nothing new, no incredible number. I mean, just, um, you know, 70. That's not that big of a, an amount. Uh, no new further activity to note there across Northern California following this morning's uh, quakes there across the area. San Francisco, pretty quiet out there as well. Um, south here, getting a little clustering going on on the Calaveras Fault down here. Uh, nothing big, very small microquakes, but uh, a little clustering going on. Pretty quiet across the rest of the uh, bay there. Down into the uh, San Andreas Fault, 2.3 this morning. That is on the creeping section. Parkfield segment, pretty quiet for now. Uh, Ridgecrest area starting to fill in with a whole bunch of earthquakes out here. Uh, nothing big, just a bunch of small microquakes. In extreme Southern California, got one earthquake here in the last hour. Little one pointer. 1 1.5 there across Los Angeles earlier this afternoon as well. Uh, nothing above 2.5. Pretty quiet out there across the board, far as anything above that. A couple earthquakes though on the San Andreas Fault itself on the southern branch 1.4 uh, one of the most recent quakes out there right again right on that southern branch there uh, anything could trigger that uh, that big one at any time out there uh, looking at the rest of the globe the flat scale model earth there's that six pointer uh, this originally came in as a 6.1 then got upgraded as 6.5 then settled down to a 6.1 uh, nothing new to report there across that area for now, as um, far as aftershock sequences go. Uh, it is along that major subduction zone that's capable of producing a, a mega quake uh, in the 9 range. Uh, it's been quite a while since we've seen any activity there. Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, newest activity looks like just off the coast of Japan, 3.5 there. Nankai Trough remains quiet. Typical clustering going on here across the Philippines area southward. Uh, a little bit of newer movement here across the Vanuatu area. Looks like a five-pointer. That one uh, fairly deep there, it looks like. Let's see if the USGS is reporting that, uh, which they are. About 97 miles deep here into a uh, subduction zone that sits right around the Port Villa area. Uh, let's see if anything's stirring up down across New Zealand. 3.2 South Island area. Looks like that may be pretty close to the Alpine Fault. Some deeper activity up along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, we got this movement over here in the southeastern Pacific. That, uh, as I noted, there's probably... Let's see where that's at. Very close to the triple point boundary here. Um, between the Nazca, the Antarctica, and the Pacific Plate. Notice the arrows separating here, uh, meaning some divergent boundary earthquake activity. 
uh, but the general arrows, the strain, pressure transfer, all pointing towards the Perugia Trench here. And it looks like we're already seeing that uh, with this cluster of quakes up here around the Peru area following that 5.1. Also some newer activity into the Chile region. Pretty good clustering going on there as well. So watch for some potential larger movement. Uh, nothing major going on there across Puerto Rico for now. Uh, looks like just some... Some earthquake activity, which is, you know, very common. One up here along the, Peru, the um, Puerto Rico Trench, 3.9. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there across the board for the USGS. Same for the EMSC model, pretty quiet out there. Uh, let's check out Hawaii real quick, see if there's anything new to report across there. Just want to double check and see what the uh, deformation data is doing. Still looks the same. Nothing changed there. Got uh, just a couple days here of building up inflation, leading up to episode number 26. As far as the Kilauea volcano eruption sequence goes, rinse and repeat cycle. Nothing has changed here. So I'm betting that will happen here in a number of days. As uh, far as severe weather goes, I know Montana was getting some uh, some big thunderstorms up there earlier. That looks to be the uh, forecast there for the remainder of the night. Got a uh, little chance for some tornado activity, mainly wind and some hail threats up there. Uh, for the day on Saturday, going to be for day two. Same area looks like. Got some tornado wind and uh, some hail threats out there around Billings and uh, portions of uh, northeastern Wyoming. Current radar imagery up there. Uh, let's pull up the radar imagery. Does show quite a bit of storms up there, mainly across southeastern Montana. But that is a lot of lightning stirring up out there. Big time storms. Also across Nebraska and down in the eastern Colorado. A lot, a lot of noise going on for a Friday the 13th night. Out here in California, well, yeah. A whole lot of nothing going on and I don't expect anything here uh, for the West Coast at all just hot and you know dry Pacific Northwest looks like they have a little rain coming to the area here as we head towards next weekend no major hurricanes noted on the map uh, which is good all right I'm out of here folks have yourself a wonderful Friday the 13th we've still got a couple hours out there left so just be safe. Um, seismograph station's pretty calm right now. Not a whole lot going on there. We'll catch you guys out here for the uh, Saturday morning updates. Enjoy your Friday night. And please, uh, like I said, please stay safe out there. Have a good one.